There is no room for a thistle to grow to the size of a Lecrae in Christian music or Reconcile or Corey Paul because the stuff we say is offensive to some people and the Christian audience, even the Christian hip hop audience and the CCM audience is predominantly made up of white Americans. So the content we have, even outside of racial content, just the, the urban content that's, that's centered around those people, some people just can't relate to it. And, and it's, it's worth it though, it's worth losing some to gain others. You know, you risk it because, you don't, not that you box yourself in, but you go into it understanding that this isn't gonna be, um, this isn't gonna be everything that I'm naturally capable of, but this is gonna spiritually be right where I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? In our country, if you look at history, change in our country has not been tied to minorities being upset or frustrated about a certain issue. Change in our country happens when the larger majority group becomes aware and provoked and, 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 and touched that, you know what, this is a problem that affects us all and therefore, um, you know, we're going to make something, you know, we're going to do something different about it. And therefore, you look at civil rights, African Americans didn't just overnight become upset and frustrated about civil rights, but it wasn't until a larger majority group said, you know what, man, this is an issue. And as a Christian, this plagues my conscience. And I can't sleep at night until we do something different about it. And I think that's the intentionality of, of what we're trying to do with the music. And the thing is that it rubs people the wrong way. There is a ceiling effect because a lot of people don't want to talk about things that are difficult like that. And so you take a chance. I think one of the beautiful things that happened too is what Rick just said. I remember when I first started making music as a Christian, you know. I made up my mind at that point where I, I felt like I saw what people were doing, what was accepted, you know, and at that point it was like the cross movement, the, the early craze stuff, flame, like these were all my peers, these are all people I hung around. So I made the choice to say I'm going to trust God to do, because the music that we make, it speaks to a group of people that Christian music typically it looks over. Right. And a lot of the Christian music that's made, you can't take it into certain arenas. Not just because it's talking about Jesus, but because stylistically it ain't the same. So we're making that choice. It's like, yo, I know I'm gonna lose some people, but the choice is made because of the people that we gain. You know, the the dudes you see in the street whose lives are affected. The majority I remember when I first started making music, I honestly thought a lot of a lot of white Christians wouldn't even get it. You gotta think this is post 116 though. So this is before all of the stuff we did with 116, all of that. But I have so many uh, white Christians that support what I do, and it's, it, it, it's, it talks back to what Rex said. They see what we doing, they hear what we talking about. And I just today I got a tweet where a dude was like, yo, I'm from the country. I'm a white dude. I don't. I can't relate to nothing that y'all talk about. But what you're saying constantly is making me aware that there's a problem, and I'm riding with you. Amen. So you, we choose to do it. You lose some of the stuff, but as Cray told me before, it's not about what you lose doing the right thing. It's about what you gain. So it's worth it. So can you expound on that? What you gain? Like, why do you? risk your livelihood to make the music that you make and speak on the things that you speak. I remember the first time, you know, that I got a hold of a Thistle CD or a Lecrae CD. Um, first, look, first Christian song I heard was Take Me As I Am by Lecrae. I thought that mother was some Tupac. I was like, what, who this is? This jungle hard, oh, right? He's talking about God. He's talking about all the stuff I've been thinking about. You know, hearing uh, Thistle talking about I hate you, you know. And I, I, had, I, I could relate because I saw all the, the drug use and the, the selling of drugs just tear down my community and my family. And so, you know, it was like, dang, man, you can be honest, you can be raw, but he's painting a picture of truth that I had never really wrestled with. And the answer was Jesus in my context. Yeah. And um, that jump was powerful. And, you know, if it could make an influence on me and keep me in a tough time in my life, you know, I knew that it could have the same influence on others, and I saw it have influence on others. And so I think 
the opportunity to even spit like we do is a, a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Because it has the, the gospel and, the, and, and raw hip hop music that comes from where we come from, Southern, this, that, trap, has the power to affect lives when you use it in that medium. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even speaking on I hate you, man, I can't tell you how many, I remember when I first made it, like some Christians had a problem with it, you know? Even some of my friends had a problem. Classic. Some of my friends had a problem. But a lot of that stuff was people intimidated by stuff that they don't understand. But, I mean, I can't tell you how many people over the years that have came up to me. Even recently, a dude came up to me and was like, man, God used your song, I Hate You. Like, it rocked me. I've been off of crack since the day I heard it. You know, and then at the end of the day, too, like, you lose some things, like you say, but you gain. But I don't want to paint the picture to make, like, like, I didn't get the short end of the stick, like, so I ain't gonna front, like, it didn't work, or it ain't working, like, it's working very well, you know? But you lose, like, I know there are a lot of opportunities that we would lose because of what we do. And it's just, the, it's, it's, it's the general consensus of what people think people want, you know? Like, people, Christian radio stations, I done had Christian radio stations tell me, you know? the audience we're trying to reach, they're not gonna like that. But then that same Christian program director will be at a concert full of that audience, and I do a set, and it's like, yo, is that, is that a new song everybody went crazy over? I'm like, no, that's the song I sent you two years ago. You know what I'm saying? So it's about consensus of what people think they want. It's about it not being cultural relevant. It's a couple of things added on to it. Some of it's offensive, but it's worth it at the end of the day. Like we say, people, people lives being changed. That's the goal. That type of person that you're making the music for, like, why do they need this type of music? Yeah, yeah. So I got, a, I got a homie. Um, he was on the block when I met him. He's from a neighborhood, Third Ward, Houston, Texas. There's lack of resources. Schools are failing. Um, you know, the viable income is, you know, to sell drugs because there's no jobs. And if you have a felony, uh, there's less opportunities. Um, sometimes a felony can be a life sentence for some dudes. It doesn't have to be, but it makes it difficult. So this young man, um, I approached him with the gospel in the midst of his circumstances, paying court fees, probation, all this different stuff. And, and he sees Jesus and it's like, bro, not only can this change my life, but this can, this can prevent me from dying. Same young man, you know, uh, standing outside of a store, there was a robbery that happened. Um, young man, um, uh, you know, fit the description of a black male with Nikes, took to jail, um, and while he was in jail, um, you know, the store wouldn't release any tape because it's at the store they sell drugs. And so the young man's in jail and he can't afford, and his family can't afford to even keep up the calls with him, how much it costs to talk to somebody, to try to coordinate a lawyer or somebody to speak on his behalf. And he's saying, you know what, man? Uh, maybe, maybe God's not the play. Maybe that's the wrong play. But through the gospel, through the music, and him remember, remembering the lyrics, Man, dog, it's gonna be all right. God has me. Um, uh, sometimes you go things through things in life that are difficult, um, um, but God's God's still there, you know. And seeing people advocate for him on behalf of Christ, like it, it made all the difference in his life. The rest of the story is, you know, uh, we were able to speak to the DA on behalf of that young man, get him legal representation, um, and you know, get the proper evidence to the DA. And so he was able to get released and, and, you know, that music has continued to keep him in his life. You know what I'm saying? It also shows him there's a way out. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's something, it's a message that continues to keep him, um, you know, in the midst of his circumstances and give him hope. And I, I think that's, that's just one of many stories where us as advocates of the gospel um, in our context, uh, living our lives, you know, have an opportunity to intercede for people who wouldn't have any other intercessor. I, and I, I always go back to, I feel like you have to like, like look around you, you know what I mean? Like look around you and find a person that, like a person that you know that 
didn't come up with resources or had them taken, you know, taken away. You know what I mean? So it's it's easier for me to connect with that person we make music for because I was that person and then my people were still that person. So I, I I've you know, so you take a person that, you know, comes from a, you know, family, no for the classic, no for the mothers, yeah, you know what I'm saying, grow up with no true understanding of what's what, how is we supposed to get around, begging and whatever. So that's what they have. So all of the the, the, the resources your parents gave you, take all that away. You know what I'm saying? Anything good they gave you, work ethic, discipline, take all that away, you know? You go, you just go, you can go midnight, you know what I'm saying, Scott Street in Houston, you'll see no gas. Seven year, tell me if I'm lying, Rick, you see seven year olds, bro, walking to the store, midnight. You know what I'm saying? No gas, that's not exaggeration. So, stop and then go. What would, what would have to be going on in my life for my seven-year-old to be walking into the store at midnight by themselves, just chilling. Or for me to be seven in the hood, six in the hood, midnight, walking to the store, riding bikes, just out. No in the morning, playing so, basketball in the project. Yeah, so, so you gotta stop and go, what would have to take place for my seven-year-old, or a seven-year-old to be that? You know what I mean? So then, that, that's what they go, and then all of a sudden, you know, 17, 18, they're like, all right, go get it. I know you never learned it, but go speak Japanese. You know what I'm saying? Go get it. And this is you fourth, fifth generation, and it's the same thing. And you just don't speak it. You never was taught it, but oh well, just get it. You know what I mean? Like, that's the person, you know what I mean? That that, that that's the person that, that we're speaking to and saying, man, like, it, you know, some compassion for this person, man. You know what I mean? And yeah, at some point in time, you know, you have to start going, well, yeah, it wasn't my fault, but now it's my problem. You know, let me get let me let me get better. But if we look at if you broke your leg and you couldn't run, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna be like, hey, suck it up, why go get it. You know, I'd be like, nah. Well, I mean, imagine that being spiritually and emotional. You know what I mean? So that's that person that we're trying to speak to. And even if I don't know you from anybody, if I see you struggling, I mean, what kind of monster am I if I wanna, you know what I mean? So that's the thing, man. Just, just look around you. Look around you. Think of whoever that person is. And then plug. That's who this project is full of them. You know what I mean? I, I'm saying this. You cut whatever I want to because I'm running my mouth. But I remember we was walking through CUNY Homes. It's like arguably one of the biggest projects in um, in, in, in Houston. We walking through there, you know, not going to do those people, whatever, you know. And it's these two little girls outside. Hey, you know, it's Houston. It's, it's hot. You know what I mean? It's two little girls outside. They're like about four or five. Knocking on the door, you know what I'm saying? We first walk by, I think they playing, you know what I'm saying? Just being kids, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. They kind of stop and look, you know, to see what's up. And they let us in, let us in. We ain't going to aggravate y'all no more. We ain't going to aggravate y'all no more. Like, re evidently repeating. You feel what I'm saying? And, you know, they pulling on the door, and I'm like, oh, they didn't put them outside. Like, in real life, put them outside. You know what I'm saying? They four or five. So, you know, of course, we go over there, hey, man, can y'all, you know, water, we try not, you know, nobody comes to the door, you know, so we water, whatever, eventually, you know, one of the ladies from us, she was like, oh, yeah, they be doing that, y'all come in here, but it's like, bro, you know what I'm saying, and, but then that's gone, and then she gonna get to a certain age, and they gonna be like, all right, go get it, go do it, you know what I mean, and so it's like, I don't care where you're from, what color you is, you got to look at that and have compassion, you know what I'm saying, it's like, man, somebody, Gotta do something, you know what I mean? Uh, do something. Do something. Mm -hmm.